Hi guys. Um, I'm dressed a bit like a bee today because I came straight from running. So uh, yeah, I thought I'll I'll crack on. So um, yeah, hello uh, TEDx. Thanks for the invite. And oh, where's the remote control? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I'll be needing that, otherwise I'll just be talking about this slide. So I'm going to share like a, a personal story with you guys, and uh, rather than talk about the next 30 days, I'll, I'll show what I've done in the past two years and what I'll probably be doing for the next 30 years. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's start. Um, so uh, you guys have probably seen like the introduction and stuff, and uh, I just wanted to show you what I, what I do. I'm, I'm trained as a product designer, uh, not a beekeeper. Um, but now I'm in Hong Kong and I've been here for around two years and uh, mostly I've been working in the fields of um, environmental and social and cultural work uh, which led me to actually becoming a beekeeper. So um, I'm uh, the founder and the creative director of an uh, organisation of beekeepers, artists and designers and uh, this is how the, the story started. Uh, it was uh, in January 2010 I visited this really uh, remote countryside, so remote that I've just completely forgotten the name of that area. And uh, whilst walking through the forest with my friend in the, in the snow, I came across these two boxes. And I asked her, um, what are these uh, strange little houses uh, on the left here? And she told me that they're her dad's beehives. And, I, and having grown up in the city for most of my life, I was kind of like really uh, amazed by... Uh, well, first of all, like the really nice architecture that her dad's built for the beehives, as well as curious about what was actually happening inside. So unfortunately, it was winter and we couldn't open up the beehives. So um, I tasted some honey from her dad and asked him loads of questions. That led me to do some research in Hong Kong. And I noticed that not a lot of supermarkets actually stocked local honey. If you look at the bottom shelf here, that's the only local honey that's available in this particular supermarket. All of the others are from uh, like uh, New Zealand, France, uh, Germany, uh, even uh, Holland as well. So uh, yeah, it made me think, how come uh, this supermarket's not really uh, supporting the local uh, honey uh, industry? And that led me to meet um, a beekeeper called Mr. Yip at the Wingwo Bee Farm. And uh, this was the first time I actually held a frame of bees. And I'm actually really scared and shaking over here. Uh, but after that, I after that day, I realized, well, they're, they're really quite friendly insects. And uh, they don't really sting unless provoked. So I decided as a hobby to follow him in into the mountains. And uh, we found a beehive underneath the tree where I stuck my head into. Uh, have a look at my socks over here. They're like, <laughs> they're tucked in over my trousers. So there were about 10,000 bees under this tree. And uh, with Mr. Yip, well, actually, no, not with Mr. Yip. I was just standing back and taking photos of him. He started to uh, collect them with his hands. And uh, he's caught the queen bee. There's a very Mr. Uh, happy Mr. Yip there. And uh, in kind of typical hobo style with the stick and, and bag attached to the end, he, he took the bees back to the beehive, uh, bee farm, where uh, we uh, started to kind of prepare the hive. And so he's using his hands again. I mean, this is all really new to me, using your hands like to touch bees. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he showed me how to do it. And I kindly obliged. And uh, th this hobby then became, well, not a hobby, it was just like an additional education. I was just kind of following him as a, uh, what we call in design research, shadowing him as a, as a beekeeper. And then that led me to find this rooftop here in an industrial uh, area in Hong Kong, uh, in Kuntong, and start uh, keeping my own bees. And so after two or three days, uh, the bees were bringing back this really nice uh, flower pollen. And uh, that made me realize, well, Hong Kong's actually, uh, well, it's not as a uh, concrete jungle as, uh, as we all uh, see it as. Um, it's kind of a very urbanly dense area, but it's surrounded by loads of greenery, uh, which these bees could fly to. And so uh, this was like an early photo that I took uh, of the, the bee farm. Uh, the bees are on the, on the right there, are just coming out to um, enjoy the sun. <laughs> and uh, I keep uh, Chinese bees, uh, which are 
slightly smaller than Western ones, and uh, they harvest less honey, but unfortunately, uh, they're more aggressive. So I was at the bee farm today. No, I'm just joking. I, I fell over uh, last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they fly. Where do they go to get their honey from? Uh, so that bee farm that I just showed you is over here, and uh, they can actually fly, fly five kilometer radius which uh, covers quite a lot of uh, greenery. They could even uh, go across the water as well with no, um, uh, uh, what is it, like toll fee. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, so uh, um, I learned from Mr. Yip uh, a form of beekeeping where you wear no protection. And uh, I kind of feel it's more, um, more ethical and it creates a cl closer connection between you and the bees. Because uh, if you start wearing a, a net and gloves, you're a bit kind of less uh, aware uh, if you're disturbing them, and you might start to feel a bit more confident. So by not wearing protection, I, I move really slowly, and I uh, I don't really uh, bother them if they if they're aggressive at all. But they're they're doing they're doing okay now. They're quite uh, well behaved. Um, so we. I do, we do a lot of communication, so uh, some graphic design to kind of communicate uh, uh, the importance of bees. So um, if you read the bottom sentence there, it's estimated that uh, bees pollinate roughly one third of our food. So this is really important. Um, and we kind of list just some generic food or everyday foods uh, just so people could kind of connect to them. And we, uh, we talk a lot about food mileage as well. And uh, this is something like very important, um, like just to kind of, uh, uh, especially in Hong Kong actually, because uh, we, we're quite an import export culture. Um, and if you go into like a lot of shops or supermarkets, a lot of stuff, even organic shops in Hong Kong, uh, it's very difficult to find local food in an organic shop, which is uh, quite scary. So we kind of just do simple infographics to communicate that. And also um, other stuff relating to bees, such as uh, like beeswax. Um, a lot of candles that are actually uh, being sold uh, in, like, uh, in the high street um, mix paraffin wax with beeswax. And paraffin wax is petroleum-based, and when burnt, it releases a kind of black smoke. So... Um, we kind of just communicate stuff like that. And also, um, just more kind of infographics on uh, what, what, is it, what is it like uh, to harvest honey in Hong Kong and how often can you do it. So just uh, general information about all year honey harvesting. So different to Sweden, uh, which has like a very cold winter, uh, we are just, uh, we could, we're lucky to, enough to harvest honey all year round. So we do like these tours as well. Uh, so it's great to kind of see really young kids not scared of bees and going really close to the beehive. And we also kind of do uh, corporate tours, which is something I didn't think would really touch. Uh, companies which uh, want to be more environmentally aware, they, they contact us and then come and uh, uh, visit us at our, 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 our beehives. And uh, we collaborate with local artists. So this, uh, this is a, a good friend, Martin Chung, that I, I work with on Hong Kong Honey Projects, as well as other ones. So uh, you might see this little black box over here. Uh, it's actually a pinhole camera that he's built. And uh, he created a, a, like a straight on, kind of front on exposure of what is happening inside the beehive. So there's loads of bees quite blurred, and some are really focused, the ones that haven't moved. And uh, we work with local uh, artists as well. So this is Mr. Fung, who has a stall, like a street stall on Chang High Street. And uh, he specializes in drawing portraits uh, using pencil. Um, so we commissioned him to draw a, a portrait of Mr. Yip. And uh, it took him about two weeks. And um, for me, it's really good to kind of work with uh, kind of non-contemporary and more traditional artists. And uh, this is a collaboration that uh, we worked with some, of the with some of the people in the audience. It was uh, with Amnesty International. And uh, we uh, found 50 artists to um, make 50 candles which reflected human rights issues, uh, such as safe food or like freedom of expression. Uh, so this was like a really fun thing to work on, like one of our favorite projects. And uh, we also uh, 
work back with the beekeepers. So um, I'm doing some graphic design now for uh, Mr. Yip, which is quite interesting uh, <laughs> because I, I don't think he would ever uh, outsource uh, any designers to help him with any design. <laughs> And uh, we do research in Shenzhen, so this is a, a weird beehive on top of a toilet. Uh, a beehive with uh, some tofu stickers on front of it. And uh, this was uh, when we uh, launched last year. Uh, we done a candle making event and uh, just some, uh, some stuff. So uh, we, we kind of use product design as like an extra communication tool on, uh, on what we do, so like a lot of the like the packaging, it's very uh, like eco-friendly, and it's it's kind of got subtle hints to uh, Chinese old Chinese medicinal packaging. And uh, we try to make uh, our packaging as kind of green as possible. So uh, this is actually our 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 honey packaging, and uh, the jar is just made from uh, well, just the, it's just the normal drinking glass that we sourced, and the lid's made from beeswax. Uh, so when you finished eating the honey, um, you could just use the glasses for drinking and the lid as a candle. So we tried to kind of uh, use like real kind of new ways of packaging and uh, minimizing waste uh, and kind of promoting what the bees do. Uh, this is a candle we designed for um, Amnesty International. Uh, those of you that could uh, write Chinese could see that it's like the Chinese character for person or human. Um, so uh, Martin, uh, the, the pinhole photographer guy, he, he took these really nice photos uh, which have kind of like suggestions to uh, like human rights. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, like candle making workshops. Uh, which allows us to talk about what we do in like a very informative way. So we get a lot of women <laughs> coming to the workshop, and a lot of women bring uh, drag their husbands or boyfriends along. So there's only one guy here. <laughs> so if if there are any single men in this uh, in this audience, you should try and come to the next workshop. But not not all men because <laughs> it might not work like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we work with uh, uh, like really cool cafes that we uh, we kind of uh, resonate with and really uh, share values with. So a lot of you might recognise this road. It's Hennessy Road in so in uh, Wan Chai, and you can see Sogo in the in the back, which is quite funny because the previous uh, supermarket was also in that building as well. So it's like we've kind of come half or full circle. Um, so yeah, we put a beehive on top of their roof. The cafe's on the first floor, and we're training up uh, Sunny, who's a chef and a farmer uh, at the restaurant, uh, to keep bees. I should really Photoshop that knife from the background. It looks really threatening. I always look at that knife whenever I show this slide. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we harvest the honey from the roof, and Sunny um, harvests the mint that he's growing on the roof, and uh, we just drink it on the first floor. So. It's, for this kind of thing to happen in Hong Kong, I think is, is really unique, and I actually really enjoy it. Uh, it's, it feels like uh, what I do with Hong Kong Honey is really connected to my personal life. And uh, my, my personal life includes also uh, uh, collecting bees. So uh, if there are any wild swarms, uh, I, I go and collect them. Uh, I do a lot of beehive kind of design as well. Uh, I uh, told my girlfriend recently it's actually micro-architecture, <laughs> which makes it sound uh, much more professional than it actually is. So um, yeah, I, uh, I build beehives often in the building just next door. Uh, there's a workshop there. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And I work with a lot of the students here in PolyU. And, uh, Another beekeeper I work with is Mr. Mann, who uh, supplies us with uh, bees. Um, and then uh, we often deliver these bees to uh, some remote areas, not, not all, all the time in the city. And uh, this is a, roo a green rooftop uh, in Taipo. Uh, it's got some nice solar panel and uh, a completely uh, lawned roof. And uh, so, yeah, we've, we've set that up. Uh, there around five months ago, and the bees are doing pretty well. And uh, there's a short video that uh, I probably won't be able to show today, uh, but yeah, feel free to check it out. Uh, one thing that I'm working on now is uh, a lot of rooftop farming. 
simply because I really like to kind of do stuff like this, uh, harvest uh, like the herbs from the roof and mix it with the honey from the rooftop as well. So yeah, that's about it today. And uh, there's a lot of other projects that I'm doing, but I think uh, this is a good start, a good summary of the past two years of being in Hong Kong. Thank you.